thanks to the supporters of channel member Ryan Duffy. Well, our pursuit of trophies for what should be the final season of non league Legend continues today. We've got the European Super Cup against Manchester City. We kick off our Bundesliga campaign against Hertha Berlin and we just need to keep winning football matches so we can make sure we end up winning the Champions League as well. I've kind of got my heart set on this being the final season, so things need to go well because we ain't ended until we've won the Champions League. Hello, welcome to Club 6, part 13 of non to Legend. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have that European Super Cup final, I guess you'd call it, against Champions League winners Manchester City. And then we face Hertha Berlin at home in the first game of the new Bundesliga season. If you missed yesterday's transfer special, go back and watch it. Lots happened. Um, we have basically cleared out our backup players and brought in some higher quality backup players and Etienne Tippel has arrived in Germany. There are your headlines, but there's more to it than that. You should go back and watch. But first up, we have Manchester City. Remember, this is a Manchester City side that does now contain Mori Koulibaly off the back of him coming in from Real Madrid last summer. They have been interested in both Boning and Drury from us. I know a few years ago they got to the point where they had no striker. It looks like they've solved that problem. Have they been spending big again? It's it's kind of the thing that they have, they haven't spent big this summer. They did spend big. When did they sign Koulibaly? I say he officially counted as the end of the year before. So really, Koulibaly was their last big signing. Since then, very little in the way of transfer business. But presumably, they've just gone back to winning everything again. So it doesn't really matter to them. Um, that's not true either. Second place in the Premier League. Three years in a row, but they are now four times Champions League winners. Um, obviously, their most recent win was last season. They also won it um, against us. So was that No, it wasn't when I was at Norwich, was it? I didn't get to the final with Norwich. So they've won it two of the last three years. Um, the only team to win it other than them in the last three years was temporary Kev at Real Madrid. They're a good side still, but let's win the Super Cup. This is the team we're going to send out there to win the Super Cup and show the world that we're ready to go and win the Champions League this year. It is our full-strength first team. Nobody unavailable that would have been in this team. And it is, goodness me, it's a strong side. Diego Henrique in goal. A back four of Locatelli, Stewart, Posterino and John. Drury and Idoloff in midfield. Ballo, Schultz and Boning behind Luis Gustavo up front. And just look at the strength in depth on that bench. We are as good as any team in the world. This is a better side, a be certainly a better squad, but I think we've got more outstanding, sort of standout, elite-level players than we had at Real Madrid. This is a team better than any other team I've had in this entire series. And we've had some good teams, so we should be picking up another victory today. It's kind of... I'm kind of at the point where that's what I'm expecting. I'm expecting to win, and if we don't, I'm going to be very sad. Luis Gustavo on the right-hand side, playing it back to Posterino. And now Stuart, they're our two centre-backs, knocking the ball around comfortably on the edge of Manchester City's area. And they're not retreating. They're just both hanging out there, having a lovely old time. Look at them. I mean, they are retreating a little bit now. Drury could probably go and help them out a little bit more. But he plays it forward to Gustavo. But now Locatelli on the left-hand side. That all comes from how comfortable our two centre-backs were in possession. It might be disallowed for offside. But even if it is... How good a Posterino and Stewart to not give the ball away there. And it looks like the goal has been given as well. But they, I mean, they were under pressure. They struggled, but they did keep hold of the ball. Eventually found Drury, who found the pass to set up the goal. Fantastic work from two world-class centre-backs who are very comfortable on the ball. Um, Koulibaly playing in the attack. I mean, we've got the three best attacking midfielders of the series all on the pitch at the same time here. Schultz, Koulibaly, Drury, all playing in the same match. This is a real test of who is the best player in the world? Because I'm convinced it has to be one of those three. I know Sergio Delgado is the only player we've had who's won a Ballon d'Or. If Colin Schultz doesn't win the Ballon d'Or this year, there's something wrong because he's been such a difference maker for us. I feel like he is the best player of the entire save, but there's an opportunity with them all on the pitch today to prove me wrong. And I, I got a, I've got a feeling, a feeling we're getting a preview of the Champions League final at the end of the season. 
um, in this match. And at the moment, we are ahead. Although Manchester City, from our corner, have got a counter-attack coming down this right-hand side. But Ballo tracking back, getting the tackle in. What a what a piece of defending from our inside forward there. We're just... We're a complete football team. It's total football you're getting from us. Everybody's comfortable doing everything. You saw our centre-backs knocking the ball around like creative midfielders. You've got one of them running the ball out of defence now. And you've seen Ballo back doing a covering tackle. The whole team can do everything. Morales is the reason I'm here as Dortmund manager, by the way. He was the Dortmund goalkeeper who Rogers sold and didn't replace, which led to that fifth-place finish for a team that should never have finished as low as fifth. So the fact he went to Manchester City is where it all went wrong for Brendan Rodgers, which in turn led to the Chapman era in Dortmund, which brought the Bundesliga home. So thank you, Morales. You, uh, without you, none of this would be possible. John, lovely pass into the path of Idolov, who bursts out of midfield and his shot goes just wide. But seeing him do that makes me very excited at the thought of we're going to see Etienne Tipple doing that again for the first time in years um, when he comes on in that role and gets those bursts out of midfield that we know he's so very good at. Idolov's doing it again here, though. Just forget passing, just dancing past his men. And that is lovely from Idolov. Everyone, including me, thought there was going to be a pass. And because of that, the the team just opened up and let him run through. Kula Bali showing that he's capable of a decent through ball as well there. But Max John has it covered because we're good at defending as well. We're not just, we've got a world-class defence. It's not just the attack. Oh, it's a good football team. I love this stage of the save. Luis Gustavo is in here, launches it over the top of the goalkeeper, but it doesn't duck down quickly enough to end up in the back of the net. But I love the fact we've built such an incredible team here. And I just, I want to, I want my, I want the reward for my hard work. Is this Koulibaly to take? It should be Munia, not Koulibaly. I mean, I guess that's why... Stevie Munier gets to take it because it's a very good free kick from him. Enrique not able to get his outstretched fingertips to it. And City are level. 64 minutes gone. It's 1-1 and that is one of the best free kicks you'll ever see. I mean, we've seen Koulibaly hit him, but clearly that guy can hit him better than he can. In fact, it looks like Koulibaly's gone off the pitch. So that's another reason perhaps why he didn't take it. Right, we've got substitutions we can make here. We've got a lot of talent on the bench. So, we're going to take off Ballo. The question is, do I put Schultz out wide and bring Drury forward? Or do we give Nigel Salaba Labino, who has been fantastic in the two games he's played so far, do we give him the opportunity to come on and play out wide? Hmm. If we were to... I think we're going to put... I think we are going to give Drury the opportunity to play out there. Because we've got, I want to get Tipple on, and we're going to do that. And Gustavo's having a poor game, so Ruben can come on for him. That's a nice, easy one. And you know what? We'll bring on um, Salah Bulabino anyway, and we'll do that. That can be our changes. We're going to go attacking, so we want to win the game. I don't know how many substitutions were allowed in this. Hold on. We've got three more subs remaining, so we can do that for now, and we'll do another three further on in the game. So... Six substitutions allowed seems nuts, but we'll make them. It's fine. It's just a glorified friendly, really, isn't it? If you can make six substitutions, probably could have made some changes a little bit earlier. Um, but we've now gone attack him. We're going to offer a little bit of encouragement. And I guess we'll go and make three more substitutions. Oh, now it's down to zero. So it was only three. Well, I didn't need to make any more anyway. Didn't even want to. Wasn't even looking. How, how rude of the game to suggest I was looking. I think this goes straight to penalties. If we don't grab a winning goal here, I doubt you're going to get extra time in a preseason friendly. So I suspect we're leaving everybody wanting more, getting ready for that Champions League final in nine months' time. No winner today, although Drury, oh, what a piece of football that is. And it was Tipple, who's the one who gets under the end of it and his shot forces a corner. But it was lovely one-touch football. There's no way the commentary could keep up with that. And now Idoloff with the in-swing, a last attack of the game, and it is cleared, but Tipple very nearly doing a Tipple special, which we haven't seen for a long time. Um, is it going to... It is actually going to extra time. Do we get an extra substitution now? We do. Right, we will make another change then. So, Idoloff maybe could come off. Or do, who have we got on the bench that we want to bring on? We could bring on... 
We could bring on Cordoba, who's been in good goal scoring form, but I think we probably need to change up the midfield. Idoloff can come off. Stubaluk can come on for him. Just get some extra energy into midfield. We'll offer some more encouragement again. Can't believe that there's extra time in a game like this. I mean, these players aren't even fully match fit yet. This is bonkers. Boning on the right. Plays it across to Drury, who does beautifully. Oh, what a goal from Stephen Drury. The control as that ball is played in for him. He's just, he's teasing the defender. There's no hope for the defender. Is that Dario, the best defender in the world, he's done that to? This is ridiculous from Drury. Just the way, I mean, I guess there's a, it isn't quite, I thought he'd rolled it back himself, but it's actually an attempted block that fell fortuitously for him. But either way, it isn't the it isn't Dario. Dario has moved out to left back, which is inexplicable. But either way, we are ahead. We should probably drop back down to a positive mentality. We don't need to be full on attacking now. And we'll uh, we'll take this. We'll we'll happily take a victory against what is a very very strong Manchester City team that's just side that's just won the Champions League. Um, that's a problem. Lewis Stewart, our best defender, having to go off injured. Uh, Tipple, we know, can drop back. I mean, not really to play centre-back, but he can play left-back. I mean, he's full of experience. He's only five foot nine. Can Locatelli play centre-back? Not really. He's five foot six. Um, Etienne Tipple is going to play centre-back for the final few minutes of this game. That's when you know I trust the man. I'll trust him to play that role for the final few minutes of a big game. But... He does it. We have picked up our third trophy of the season and we haven't even played our first Bundesliga game yet. That's coming up in the second half of the episode. But we are winners of the European Super Cup and we get to, we're get we getting used to seeing this animation now. Champion, We're going to call ourselves Champions of Europe. Why not? I think, that, I think that's fair. Champions of Europe. Champions elect. Oh, lovely stuff. Lovely, lovely stuff. Let's hope Stuart isn't too badly injured because that will really take the shine off of winning what is effectively a pointless competition. So let's just check in on him. We have signed a wonder kid, very expensive centre back in the summer that we haven't used yet. So yeah, that's, that's fine. We can work with a damaged heel. We have medals. We have money. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. Now let's go and beat her to Berlin. So a little bit of tiredness off the back of the Manchester City game then. So we shuffled things around a little bit. Um, Henrique stays in goal. Back four is now Norberto at left back. Aranua, Postino, Postorino, sorry. And John, in fact, we'll swap those two around. Um, we kind of, I think, I, yeah, I don't know. Neither, I, I, they can both do both, but Aranua, I think we've seen do better at left back in the past. Um, Stubaluk and Tipple are going to be in midfield. Then Schultz out on the left. Drury and Luis Gustavo behind Ruben up front. So, a few changes, trying a few different things, and fingers crossed, picking up a victory against one of our close arrivals. I mean, it's a big game to start the season off. And no, not subs. I'm trying to get the league table on there. I can't see because there's stuff going on. There's a football match going on. How rude of them. Schultz is in, and he's he's only gone and hit the post. It's a rare start on the left-hand side of midfield for Colin Schultz. We've barely used him out there. It's what we actually signed him to do. This is certainly a front four I had in mind, uh, maybe with Boning on the right and Gustavo up front, but this is kind of what the plan was. But we didn't have as much of a strength in depth in midfield last year as we have now that we've got Tipple in there. And you know you know, I love Tipple. So expect to see a little bit more rotation, a little bit more variety in what we're doing with the midfield this year. Um, Stubaluk finds Tipple. Tipple to Gustavo. Playing a little bit deeper today. Slots into Ruben. And Ruben scores. And the referee needs to get his finger out of his ear. There's no question there in my mind that that's onside. It was a perfectly timed run. Perfect perfect pass. And it has been awarded. You didn't even need to check, ref. I could have told you. I did tell you. You just didn't listen. Um, but that, I mean, there's no, there's no doubt. Absolutely no doubt that that run was timed perfectly. We don't need to see any kind of replay that might have lines on the screen. We know that was perfectly timed. Um, let's have a look. What uh, Leipzig are already winning. I'm also interested in how Dortmund are getting on. We just want to we want to be at the top of the league on our own quickly and start to get some points on the board because our European adventure is going to be a little bit more challenging this year. Playing in the Champions League, 
we're not going to get as many easy games in Europe. Last year, we played the reserves for the last two group games. A lot of our second legs were kind of foregone conclusions. This year, I'm expecting tough games all the way through. Um, John has picked up a knock, so Muller can come on for him. Don't, don't even need to look at the tactics page. We know Thomas Muller, not that one, is the man to come on when John is injured. But yeah, I think we have got the best strength in depth we've had at any point in the save up to this point. So I this is the year, and you know, I know I've said it a million times, this is the year we learn to do squad rotation. That was lovely work from Tipple. Everything he does, I'm going to describe as lovely because you know I think he's great. It almost makes me want to play a system that has the Mazala in just so I can see him dancing around as a Mazala one more time. Schultz is in here and Colin Schultz consider, continues his fantastic goal scoring form from last year. He came in, he just started rattling in the goals and he's going to carry it on. It's lovely work from him. It all comes from the goalkeeper having the ball. Lovely interception from Luis Gustavo, plays into the path of, path of Schultz and from that moment on, you're only ever going to back Colin Schultz to find the to find the finish, and he does, and it's two 0 And I'm starting to look down at the bench in terms of saving players because we've got Champions League coming up. We don't know who we're playing or when. The draw hasn't happened yet. I am very aware it will be starting in the near-ish future. Um, Schultz, a little bit of a a lucky bounce, but comes away with the ball, and now now nobody can get near him. Stubaluck. From deep, plays it out to Muller. Muller with the cross. Ruben is there and Ruben scores and it's three. And the referee, once again, is checking with VAR. This man needs to have a little bit of confidence in his own convictions. Every goal is getting a little VAR check. We just, we play in the margins, referee. Apparently that one was offside. We like to push the boundary. We're not going to score. Uh, and I mean, look, that you give that. For goodness sake, give that. Wowzers. Freiburg are top of the league. They must be winning more than we are. Um, right, let's make some changes. There's a lot of tired legs. Drury's going to come off. And we are going to put Schultz in there. And we're going to get Salaba Labino on because he's been brilliant. And I want to see him carry on being brilliant. I want to see him be brilliant in a league game. What I'd also like to see is Han Jae Sung, who we haven't seen yet. So he can come on, he can come on for Tipple. Um, it would have been nice to get Barisha on as well, but we picked up that knock to um, to John, so we don't really have the option. Posterino off for um, for Tava guy. What's his name? Barisha. Would have been a nice change to be able to make, but there's going to be plenty of time for him to get into the team. He doesn't need to be diving straight in there immediately. That is a weird pass from Herta, but it has led to an opportunity um, we could do with doing some defending here. The goalkeeper's all over the place. We do just about get away with it. The post was struck, but the clearance was also made. So I guess we just about get away with it. Um, goal kick for them. And once again, we've missed out on the ball here, but Diego Norberto collects comfortably and the ball is cleared. Looking for Ruben. I thought for a second there, Ruben was going to get free, but it didn't quite land for him the way I think he thought it was going to, but he had got away from the defender. Now Posterino with a poor defensive header at the other end. Barisha is looking on with interest because he uh, he might feel like he could have done a little bit better with that. And that is terrible defending all around. And if we are going to give away a win here, that is going to be troublesome. But that was all self-inflicted from our defenders. Poor clearance, poor pass poor clearance yeah just there's three or four players at fault for that let's not let them back in please final attack of the game and i mean it might not it might even not be the final attack of the game it's not they've got another one here they've got the ball clear into a position that looks penalty-ish uh posterino gets away with it and luis gustavo just needs to get the ball clear get the ball clear somebody and i love this most of the time but right now, get the ball up the other end of the pitch where we've got fast boys who can run away. The Aaron Ur knows the drill and he's drawn the foul out of the her to play there. And that is Aaron Ur knowing how to do do things the way I want things done. Good work from Aaron Ur. Still 30 seconds left in this game and The Rock has the ball for them in goal and he's lumped the ball forward. Thomas Muller, not that one, winning it back. And surely we can have a final whistle. Now, the referee, this has been a little bit more stressful than I anticipated it being. This was supposed to be comfortable, but they are once again on the attack. Posterino 
still just... I mean, I know I've got him on a ball playing defender instruction. That doesn't mean he's not allowed to clear it. He is allowed to clear it. And that would have been a nice time with a couple of seconds to go just to lump it clear. We've got away with it. But goodness me, did we make it hard for ourselves? Don't be surprised if Stuart and Barisha are our back uh, centre-back partnership by the end of the season. Because those two clowns today did not look like they knew what was going on. Goodness me. Right. What's this transfer? What's going on here? Oh, that's the um, one of, another one of the youngsters that we brought in last summer. Um, that we're never going to use. So we're trying to sell him on. We've had a £32 million offer, I think. A £31 million offer. But he's probably on his way out. But the important thing is, we did win. We're not top of the league, but we've got a win on the board, which is more than which is more than Dortmund can say. Not that we're Dortmund. Bayern Munich. Bayern Munich losing on the first day at home to Augsburg. Oh my goodness. It has all gone wrong. At Bayern Munich, Nagelsmann has been there for 17 years. I think his uh, I think his run might be coming to an end because that is uh, yeah, it's all going wrong at, at Bayern Munich. Houses. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily football manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.